the ethereal science of sound right reason is noon for sure, and noon is also the science of liberation for the mental dead. Noon is the truth and the science of mental resurrection and liberation from adverse forces, because it deals in correct information and imparts vital knowledge to those who are ignorant about the nature of, laws of, and requirements of the one supreme being by whom we all survive and have our existence and consciousness. Like Nupu is the ethereal powers of Noon, Noon is the ethereal science of Nupu that deals in beginnings and endings of persons, places, and things, and their developments and declinations. Noon is the ethereal question and answer science, therefore, it does not just make for beautiful words but likewise provides positive knowledge for survival, liberation, and better living, plus the knowledge peoples need to know for mental food and mental growth. Noon is the nature of nature in words of knowledge and positiveness. The one supreme being is nature absolute, meaning, nature, whole and complete. The one supreme being is absolute nature who is infinite in all directions and eternal. Of course, infinite means endlessness in space, and eternal means endlessness in time as well as having no beginning. There are many gods, but only one, one supreme being, and that is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient nature, also known as the all in all. Absolute nature is all space, all matter, and all time and the three are one and inseparable. Absolute nature is all persons, all places, and all things, past, present, and future. All space is endless vacuum, emptiness, and nothingness in all directions. All matter is endless somethingness and occupant of space in all directions. And all time is endless continuity and keeper of the existence of all space and all matter in all directions. Therefore, the true definition of matter is anything and everything that occupies space, and the true understanding of this definition of matter does mean that all spirit beings, gods, and goddesses who exist must be parts of absolute nature and may be called the angels of the one supreme being. The one supreme being exists by opposites called nothingness which is indeed vacuum and somethingness known as matter, controlled by energies called brain newts and reason, and instincts and characteristics known as laws and cycles. Reason is the supreme energy produced by brains. Brain newts grow brains, and brains produce thinking and reason. Brain newts are the gods in the matter of absolute, and they pervade all matter in one degree or another and make all persons, places, and things related. Although brain newts can neither be seen with the naked eyes nor with a microscope, we can see with them, hear with them, smell with them, taste with them, and feel with them, emotionally and physically. Brain newts grow brains who are their visible physical representatives, and this means that brain newts are mental, spiritual, and physical for all their practical purposes. Brains melt down brain newts into workable active energy called mind and mentality, part of whom may be reason, and reason is the active mind energy who creates all persons, places, and things, whether they be artificial or natural, while using other energies as well as reason himself and herself. It is true that brain newts are magic and magnetic particles of matter, brains are the medium of brain newts and reason, and reason or reasoning is the mental process of figuring something out. Naturally or artificially, before anything can be created for the first time by whatever means, the form it will take and the formula or material that will be used to constitute it must be decided, and the only one who can do this is reason. Of course, reason has different degrees and levels up to the cosmic reason, and the cosmic reason has opposites called Nu, also known as Nu Pu, and Zeus, also called Logos. Nu exists in the top half of the existence circle and is the first prime mover, primary creator, and resurrectionist of the mental dead. Logos exists in the bottom half of the circle of existence and is the second prime mover, secondary creator, and evolutionary processor of persons and things. For the benefit of the listening audience, Logos is spelled L-O-G-O-S. Noon is the ethereal science of Nupu, and pantheism is the ethereal science of Logos. The life of the one supreme being is natural ether produced by the sons of the universes, and sound right reason, the liberator, is the best mind of that life, because it produces the positive and best knowledge, understanding, and wisdom for persons and things, as well as being the creator of the universes and infinite eternal nature. Sound right reason is new also known as new poo, and reason includes male and female principles and energies as the opposite's creator. There are five main levels of gods and goddesses of absolute nature, the one supreme being, First level, the brain newts gods and goddesses who are in all matter of infinite nature in various degrees, and they are ethereal and produce brains. Brains produce reason and reason produces entities and organisms, persons and things by way of brain newts and brains. Brain newts are the highest quality of matter that can exist and are thereby the gods and goddesses in all matter at the highest level. Brain newts are spontaneous and efficacious, meaning, they are automatic when conditions in nature call for movement and they are able to do what is necessary to fulfill the requirements of their laws and cycles. 
Being microscopic and macroscopic means that brain newts can neither be seen with the microscope nor the naked eyes, but we can see with them, taste with them, hear with them, smell with them, think with them, and feel with them, emotionally and physically. Brain newts are magic and magnetic particles of matter who is nature's ultimate powers who do all creations through brains and reason. As a brain is formulated by brain newts, reason develops and does its works. There are many gods and goddesses but only one, one supreme being, and that is absolute nature, infinite in all directions and eternal. The second level is the orb gods and goddesses who by way of brain newts, brains, and reason, nine reason, grew the chaotic matter of absolute nature into creation order. The orb gods and goddesses are universe orbs and bodies like the stars, planets, and satellites of the universes and the universes themselves. There are galaxies of universes of infinite nature like there are galaxies of stars in the gigantic universes. The third level is the spirit gods and goddesses produced by the brains of the universe orbs such as the stars, planets, and satellites of the universes of eternal nature. The brains of universe orbs are located in their centers, and they produce spirit beings called original spirit gods and goddesses by brain concentration, and spirit beings multiply by division, meaning, male and female ether energy organisms divide part of themselves and unite those male and female parts and formulas into a single spirit organism or entity. Spirit gods and goddesses are programmers and controllers in absolute nature and may be called the angels of the one supreme being. Spirit beings do not physically create like brain newts, brains, and reason, but they do create good or evil conditions and spells and curses that control people's lives and also their welfare. The fourth level of gods and goddesses is indeed the flesh and blood peoples who inhabit the top half of the smat circle of order during the time that the top half exists. The original flesh and blood gods and goddesses are born from the nine ether clay womb of mother goddess earth which is next to her center and extends to the source of the Nile river in equatorial Africa. But these flesh and blood original people do not have sex intercourse until the evolution quarter of the smat circle of order begins. After evolution begins and these gods and goddesses procreate the African race by sex activities, they die out and become extinct by sinking into mother earth, but they return later as races of people and animals of nature. The demigods and goddesses are the fifth level of the royalty and elites of absolute nature. A god is a male organism. Once created and organized, he never ceases to exist in one form and formula or another until the universes of nature disintegrate. And, of course, a goddess is the female version of a god definition. A god and goddess are mental and spiritual and can become physical by incarnation or magic. A demigod is a spirit god of lesser rank than an original spirit god, and he was procreated by spirit to spirit reproduction, and the same goes for a demigoddess in the female sense. An original spirit god or goddess is one who is created by brain concentration at the center of a universe orb. A different level of the demigod category is when a spirit god or goddess became an incarnation or reincarnation by entering a human being and dilating himself or herself throughout the physical body including the head of that person, and other different lesser levels of semi-godhood can be created if that incarnate god or goddess has offspring with other incarnations or reincarnates or with chosen by nature human beings. Nature royalty is determined by blood lineage flowing from the incarnations of gods and goddesses and the kinship of demigods and goddesses to their ancestry. If a person is a natural-born king, a natural-born queen, a natural-born priest, or a natural-born elite by nature, he or she learns of it in the proper place and at the proper time, because these people are royalty of absolute nature and thereby obligated to learn and practice positive nature knowledge including the laws and also standards of nature and be able to lead people in the right way. These facts are especially true now that the moon cycle and evolution have ended and the sun cycle and revolution have begun. The African race is the direct descendants of the original flesh and blood gods and goddesses who existed in the top half of the smat circle of order during the time that the top half existed, and those gods and goddesses sexually procreated the African race before they became extinct, that is to say, before they died out but metamorphosed into other persons and things after death. This writer can truly call kinky-haired people the African race, because, the gods and goddesses who reproduced us were born from the source of the Nile River in equatorial Africa, whereas the progenitors of other human races originated from the waters of Indonesia. The African race is all people who grow genuinely kinky hair on their heads by nature. The African race, also called the Ethiopian race and the black race, has kinky hair, because, the gods and goddesses who sexually procreated us had kinky hair. The true spiritual science of the African race is called none. Noon was already mentioned in these writings, and for the benefit of the listening audience and reading public again, Noon is definitely spelled N-O-O-N-E and pronounced Noon. Noon is the science of sound right reason which is the philosophy and mind of the original creator called Nupu, the first emanation of the One Supreme Being. For the benefit of listeners and readers again, Nupu is spelled 
N-O-O-P-O-O-H and pronounced no poo, the H is silent and capitalized. Noon is the ethereal science of the Ethiopian race because it was the science of the original flesh and blood gods and goddesses who procreated us Africans before they died out and became other beings. Moreover, Nupu and Noon are the positive powers and science of the One Supreme Being, and therefore are the powers who must resurrect the mental dead from their grave of ignorance about absolute nature and its laws. Like all human races, the African race has two sides, the negative and the positive. The positive side of the Ethiopian race requires sound right reason, Nupu, and the science of sound right reason, Noon, for survival, longer life, and better living. Noon is the Ethiopian race science of all the worlds. Noon deals in origins, endings, positive knowledge, positive understanding, and positive wisdom whose source is Nupu, the first emanation and cosmic powers of the One Supreme Being. Truth is knowledge, and knowledge is correct information. Truth is correct information about any person, place, or thing whosoever or whatsoever. Truth is not confined just to religion or spiritual science, it can be knowledge or correct information about anything. But the particular truth that the mental dead and those persons in mental, spiritual, and physical captivities need, is truth about absolute nature and the laws of nature needed for mental, spiritual, and physical life and security. Peoples need to know their origins and that of others and what is required by nature for survival, longer life, and better living indeed in peace and harmony with each other. It is written that we shall eventually know the truth and the truth will set us free. Noon is the kind of truth we all need for mental resurrection and liberation from adverse forces such as one-sided racism, disease, poverty, and hunger as time progresses. Truth is knowledge, and knowledge is correct information, therefore, truth is correct information. Noon is truth. The mental dead are those persons who do not know the true origin of the universes, do not know the origin of his or her own ethnic race and that of other human races, do not know and accept that absolute nature is the one supreme being eternally, do not know and also practice enough positive knowledge about unique nature and its laws for true mental life and the practice of true culture, and do not know what needs to be known for survival of Armageddon and beyond. Just as some spirit beings are deader than others, some human beings are mentally deader than others, but positive nature knowledge is the medicine needed and required to cure nature ignorance that keep peoples in mental darkness, spiritual prison, and physical captivity. The positive powers called Nupu and the positive truth known as Noon are required for resurrection from the grave of ignorance about positive nature knowledge and liberation from the prison of mental, spiritual, and physical captivities. Creating does not mean producing something from nothing as many people believe or assume. Creating means producing, reproducing, building, manufacturing, constructing, forming, formulating, composing, constituting, concentrating, or growing persons, places, and things from matter or material that are already existing. Naturally speaking, the same way the Creator creates persons and things today is the same way He and She created persons and things at the beginning of universe order, and that is by growing them. Brain newts are the creator by way of brains and reason, and brain newts exist in all matter in various degrees. Brain newts are the prime mover in matter, and the prime mover is the first particles of matter to make the first move toward putting matter into creation order. The powers and energies of eternal nature are spontaneous and efficacious, meaning, automatic and able to do what is necessary and also desired. Brain newts are activated by the proper conditions for formulation and growth and the laws and cycles of nature, and they are motivated by the nature of the matter being used in the cycle and season. The one supreme being is the life of every living person and thing, because, it is true that brain newts are in the water we drink, the food we eat, and the air we breathe. Brain newts are magi and magnetic particles of matter, and they are the gods in all matter of absolute nature, and in mentality they become mind and reason, in spirit they become natural ether and life, and physiology they become brains and light. The creator is in all matter in one degree or another, and, although we can neither see brain newts with the naked eyes nor with a microscope, we can see, taste, feel, hear, smell, and think with them. Brain newts are magic and magnetic, spontaneous and efficacious particles of matter who are indeed the source of brains and reason, the ultimate creator, that is to say, the final creator. A law of nature is a characteristic of nature and a standard of nature, meaning, each time a certain condition arises in nature, nature acts or reacts the same way to that same condition, consistently. Another way to put it is, the law of a person or thing is the nature of that person or thing. Therefore, the laws of nature are the nature of nature. If the atmospheric pressure decreases, the weather will become in climate, cloudy or windy and rainy or whatever, but, when the atmospheric pressure increases, the weather becomes fair and sunny, etc. Another example of a law of nature is, water will flow until it finds nature's level. 
These actions will happen the same way each time the conditions are the same, and these are laws of nature. Each time a person puts his or her naked hand to the fire he or she will get burned constantly, unless some magic force intervenes. This is a law of nature, because a law of nature is consistent the same way under the same conditions. Spirit beings cannot change the laws of nature permanently, but they can interfere with them temporarily, for the aim of impressing people for some reason, helping people for some reason, or harming people for some reason. A cycle of nature is a network of laws of nature designed to complete a circle of action. A network of cycles of nature is designed to complete a circle of action by degrees like the circle of existence also called the smat circle of order. Each circle degree of the smat circle of order completes a circuit of action, and a circle degree of the smat circle is 100,000 years. A degree cycle of 100,000 years has many lesser circuits which constitute the cycle. From birth until death is a cycle, when one sleeps until he or she wakes up is a cycle, and when one works until he or she becomes exhausted is a cycle, and any meaningful change in these actions during their processes is a lesser cycle or circuit. To put it another way, laws of nature constitute cycles of nature, cycles of nature constitute degrees of nature, and degrees of nature constitute circles of nature as verified by the smat circle of order and universe orbs such as stars, planets, and satellites of eternal infinite nature. The laws of pleasure and pain and the law of kindred or blood lineage are two of the laws of nature which affect human beings most. The law of pleasure and pain maintains that pleasure must be balanced off by pain and pain will be balanced off by pleasure, because pleasure and pain are opposites in nature and one must offset the other, for absolute nature is the gigantic system of opposites and balances. The foregoing information means that the less pleasure one has the less will be his or her pain and suffering, the less fun one has the less will be her problems and troubles. Also, the more pain one has not due to pleasure the more will be his or her comfort and joy, the more pain one has not due to pleasure the more will be his or her pleasure and accomplishment. A member of a species or race is only part of the whole, because the whole being of a species is the whole race. And this means what happens to one member of a race of beings has happened to the whole race, because the whole race is one by nature and heritage. The foregoing information is the basis for the law of kindred or blood lineage in nature. If a member of a species or race does something good or evil or right or wrong, the whole race is responsible for the good deed done or punishable for the bad deed perpetrated until the deed is indeed balanced off by nature or its helpers directly upon the person having done the deed, a family member, or a racial relative. This law means that you are surely your brother's keeper as the old proverb goes. Everyone should be very careful about what he or she does, because, by nature, if an individual himself or herself does not account for a deed done, a member of his family or his ethnic race will, because the deed must eventually be balanced off, and all members of the species are one and the same by nature due to the same heritage and blood lineage, originally.